<laughs> hey, scholars. I just did a whole video on chapter 14, and I forgot to hit the start button, so I get to do it again. Uh, chapter 14, MRP, Materials Requirements Planning, ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning, and you know, what's it all about? Um, first off, as far as the 10 OM decisions go, this one fits most closely in inventory. I would argue, too, it has certainly something to do with scheduling, but most closely with inventory. And let's focus on MRP. We'll just touch briefly on ERP towards the end. So what, what, what do we do with an MRP? What the MRP does is takes over where the aggregate plan left off. If you remember from the last video, sales and operating plan leads to this aggregate plan. Aggregate meaning it's aggregated. It's at a higher level. So it's going to give you, let's use a, for instance, you're making lawnmowers. It's going to say that you're going to have to produce, you know, 20,000 lawnmowers in March. Um, okay, so let's figure out how to do that. We do that in the aggregate plan. And now we're in to the uh, MRP process where we're looking more at the inventory requirements. Well, 20,000 lawnmowers doesn't do me a whole lot of good when I'm saying what inventory do I need to order for my suppliers or for my other factories that are producing my inventory for me <clears throat> so that I can make the right lawnmowers. Um, it's not a generic lawnmower. They all have different components. So the uh, MRP basically takes the aggregate plan and disaggregates it. So it says, okay, you're going to need you know, series one through series 175 lawnmowers and this many of each one. And each one of them is going to have its own parts list. And you're going to order based on those parts list. Because there's a parts list, because we can take a look at what's being required <clears throat> and, um, and understand what the uh, inventory components are, we call that a dependent relationship. So the inventory is dependent on the number of units that are going to be produced. And so we've, we've got a basket, if you will, of inventory. So anytime we're producing you know, 20 series one lawnmowers, we know that we can multiply 20 times whatever this basket of parts is, this parts list, and we'll know what uh, what we need to have on stock for the uh, for the production runs. And that's uh, that's the basics of the MRP. Um, page 566, 567. It goes into a little bit more detail, but that's that's the essence of it. There's uh, something called the Bill of Materials, uh, BOM, and the Bill of Materials is a lot like what I just described. It is the, the list of what is required for each one of the products that we're producing. So you, know, you don't have to count it up every time. You've got the list there, and you just do the math 20 times whatever's on this list, and <clears throat> that's what you need. One of the things that's important in operations management, you're in a factory, is to... Uh, to freeze the plan. So what the heck does that mean? And why is it important? Let's, let's just say, for instance, that, that you're running a plan and you got an SNOP that said six months from now, you're going to need to change your production level from 20,000 to 30,000 units produced at an aggregate level. Okay, I got enough runway, I can figure that out. So you figure it out. So then six months comes along, you're starting that process, you've gone through the planning process, and you're ready to go. And your boss comes in and says, hey, you know what? You know, things have changed. Let's make that thirty thousand. Let's just make it forty thousand now. What you got to be able to do is you got to be able to look your boss in the eye and say, "Listen, pal, uh, <clears throat> the SNOP, the planning process, everything we've went through, said what we're going to do is we're going to produce thirty thousand units. Um, can I produce forty thousand units now? Maybe. But here's what's going to happen: my variable costs are going to go through the roof. I'm going to wear out the organization, and it's." It's not the right thing to do. The right thing to do is to freeze the demand and or the production and say, okay, well, you want 40,000 units. Let's do this. Let's put it into the new SNOP, which is usually a seven-week rolling forecast. But let's put it into the new SNOP. Let me plan for it, and I'll do it properly when, the, when I've got the, the, uh, the uh, new demand planned for. So freeze your plan. And, uh, and don't let anybody talk you out of it. Um, you know, if, if the boss says that, you know, I don't care, you got to do it, then what I would do, the first thing I would do is I'd say, okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a new set of numbers. I'm going to tell you what it's going to cost me. I'm going to tell you um, basically that, you know, 
if I need to hire new people, bring in overtime, bring in the extra suppliers, you know, whatever I need to do, let your boss know <clears throat> and uh, quantify it and say, okay, well, I can do that. But instead of these costing, you know, $600 to produce this incremental 10,000 units, it's going to cost me $1,000 to produce them because this is now in chaos. It's not in my plan. It's now, it's now in chaos. I've got to turn the organization on its ear to make it happen. So um, make sure you do that. All right. So you know, lots of good stuff in the chapter here. The ERP, the Enterprise Resource Plan, it's it's planning at an enterprise level, as the name was Enterprise, yeah, Enterprise Resource Plan, Enterprise Resource Planning. It's done at a at a uh, at a more global level. Virtually everything we talk about is now automated. There's a system for it, a computer system for it, program for it, uh, but certainly in ERP there is and. So it's, it's going to coordinate some of the things that we don't necessarily worry about every day as a plant manager, type of operations manager. Um, you know, it's going to look at supplier relationships and um, you know, sustainability and things of that nature that you know, we're concerned about but don't necessarily bubble up to the top of our mind every day. And you know, the ERP is going to do that. It's going to look at you know, the the, uh, not just a particular product line, maybe you produce lawnmowers, but you produce tractors and heavy equipment and 10 other things. Well, it's going to look at everything and make sure that everything is working together in an efficient fashion. So that's it for this chapter.